Hello everyone, it's Farkad here. And in this video, I'm going to provide you with an analysis of the new Sons of the Forest trailer. That's trailer two. If you haven't seen the trailer, there'll be a link in the description to End Knight's official channel. I recommend you go there and subscribe as well, because if End Knight releases anything, the first place they're gonna release it to is their channel. Now there's quite a lot to cover, so I'm gonna jump straight into it. Now the trailer opens up with the helicopter crashing. This was also seen in the first trailer, but this is new footage. Now first, the side of the helicopter isn't on fire like it was in the first one. They might have gone through some changes or the fire went out, I'm not sure. I don't know how helicopters burn up and crash. The second thing I notice is that there's a headset or earphones on the ground. It looks like they've fallen off the player. Now the soldiers don't have these, so this is a fairly good indication that the player is not a soldier. The third thing I notice from this scene is the big mountain on the left side of the screen. Either they're going to have mountains this big or this might be a wall to the edge of the map. So this map might actually be landlocked. That was hard to say. It might limit the amount of islands they can have, which might be a bit of a concern because a lot of players like building on islands. Or it could just be a big mountain, but also could act as the border for the map. The fourth and last thing I noticed from this scene is that the player's camera looks up for quite some time at this object at the top. I believe this is a gimbal light. I don't think it's anything of significance. Next, it cuts to a scene where a player is holding a GPS. I'd say this is definitely a GPS and not a phone because of the big antenna coming out the top of it. Well, it's not really big, but it's big considering the size of the device. In the background, you can see some large snowy mountains. This might also be the border as well. You can also see fog moving. And I just want to say this now this game looks very immersive the colors of the leaves the trees the sky the feel of it it feels real it looks like a vast improvement over the last game especially with the colors the colors in this are perfect if they've got color grading i don't think i'll be messing around with it because this just looks so good though it depends how dark they make their caves or the light sources they provide you with or at night time Playing the game, you can deal with the dark most of the time, depending on your visibility, of course, but when you record and upload it as a video, if you're watching it on a mobile device, it is so much darker than watching it on a PC. So those are considerations to make. Based on this scene alone, I'd say that it is definitely located in Canada. A lot of the plants look new, so it looks like they are using a lot of new textures here. Going back to the GPS though, I think this was a good move. I found the map and compass a little bit too tedious to use because it ties up your hands. While it was more immersive, I guess, I never used them. I found it easier to learn the whole map and just navigate based off the sun and that sort of stuff. But this is a good addition. And it looks like it's been held in the left hand so you'll still be able to use a right-handed weapon because that's how the forest works generally. But you can see some of his arm, the sleeve, it looks like he's actually wearing camo and that doesn't look like clothing you could craft. Possibly you start with it or you might find it, I'm not sure. Whether it makes a difference, I don't know. The hand model definitely looks a lot better than the forest hand model. I can say that because I used to crop a lot of the images for the wiki and yeah, these hands definitely look a lot better. The next scene is the player cutting down a tree. Now I haven't figured out what axe this is. It doesn't look like the starter axe, like the chopper axe that you've seen in the first trailer. The reason being is because the axe handle is really long. It's a full proper axe. I know that's not very good terminology, but yeah. The chunks of the particles of the tree coming out when you're cutting it down also looks a lot better than the forest did. As they are running it on the latest Unity engine, they're able to do a lot more of the graphics, which is really cool. I think one of the key features of why they're showing this and what is probably the most impressive thing about this scene is the snow falling from the tree as you're hitting it. That is a really cool feature. And it looks like they've got stick trees in the snow, which is very good because in the forest, there's no stick trees in the snow. So it makes building up there, I'd say very tedious. Not only is the area more difficult, it's more tedious because you have to go so far to get sticks. So this is a massive improvement. It's actually going to make building in the snow a lot more rewarding, maybe. I think that's what they need to focus on with Sons of the Forest because the forest building in the snow wasn't rewarding. It was just unnecessarily difficult. Now in this scene here, the first thing I noticed was the reflection of the snow on top of the log as the player's moving along. I think that is so cool. I don't know if that's ray tracing. I'm not sure because I've only had my RTX x3080 for about six weeks and i still haven't played a ray tracing game so i don't know what rays look like but that might be it or it just might be very good reflections the second thing i noticed about this one is this trail that's leading to the player's hut i don't know if the player dug that out or created that or if a large enemy snake type creature made that trail it's hard to say there's another thing i've just noticed as i'm watching the footage is that the logs are less obtrusive they're not as big, they're not taking up as much of the screen. Maybe the logs are shorter, I'm not sure. The next thing to notice is that there's solar panels on top of this cabin and there's some on the ground at the side of the house. 
So this means we're going to be getting electricity, which is really cool. Knowing what the developers are like at end night, they're not going to give us like 50 caliber auto turrets to defend our base. I think it's going to be providing quality of life improvements, which is what I think a lot of people go for when they play these type of games, like such as Seven Days to Die or Skyrim. I remember when I was modding Skyrim, I always went for the quality of life mods. The ones that just make it feel more immersive or to make a few things a little bit easier without going overboard. Like instead of cooking your food on a fire, having to light the fire every time, you've got a stove. It's just a matter of flicking it on, boom, cook your stuff rather than collect wood, collect sticks, light the fire, make sure you don't burn the food, etc. So that's definitely a good addition, I think. Though if the game ever goes to Steam Workshop, the game will probably definitely expand upon that. People will add their own stuff for what they think would be useful in a survival situation. You know, Liberty Prime from Fallout, for example, with solar panels on it. I'm just going to move on from this one. The next thing I notice is that this looks like a drying rack of some kind, but it looks like there's skins on there. So there might be a tanning process involved with the Sons of the Forest, which I think is a very good feature. So like when you kill an animal and skin it, you can't just use the skin straight away. You've got to go through the tanning process. Obviously, they've got to avoid making the process tedious, but I think it is a legitimate process that has to go through if you want you know, a better quality leather rather than just using the skin itself. Though I'm not a survival expert, so I can't really comment on it. Next is the fences, and they look really good. The other ones in the forest looked a little too clean for my liking. I actually like that these look like something I would put together in a survival situation. <laughs> but it looks very realistic. They're not using the same model for each section. They've got different models, so it doesn't look like each piece is exactly the same as the next, which is cool. Next thing is that the player's in the snow, and those snowy mountains are still very far away. <laughs> So based on what I've seen so far, this map is looking at least twice as big as the forest map, but I'm pushing more for it. It's going to be about four times the size, though I don't really care about the size of the map. I care about what's in the map because you could just have this big empty world and I don't think they'll want to go down that route. I don't think the forest ever felt empty, so I'm not too worried about it. Now, the building that's there, it looks like a pre-built log cabin that you should be able to build. What I really like about it is that it's a lot bigger than the log cabin in the forest. The forest log cabin was fine. It was just very small. They might be going down a route of having bigger pre-builds. I think that would be a pretty good feature. Another thing from the scene is that there's a guitar there, and I'm not sure why that's there. It looks like a Gibson guitar. I'm not very knowledgeable with guitars, but it's not an ESP or LTD or anything like that. It's got the Gibson shape, but that's not really relevant. The thing is, why is there a guitar there? And what I'm thinking is maybe with the props they have in the game is that you can actually take them with you and you can use them to decorate your house. I know that sounds pointless and it probably is, but a lot of people would like that to be able to take objects from around the world. Maybe it could be used as a morale booster because, you know, playing music will obviously boost morale, even though it looks like an electric guitar. So you need an amp, but he's got power, so he might be sorted. Who knows? You don't really need an amp with electric guitar, but it does definitely help. The next thing is that there's logs on the side of the house and they're stacked like they are in a log holder, but you can't see a log holder there. Maybe they might be going down a route of you don't really need log holders for storing logs. Who knows? I reckon it would be a pretty cool feature. I mean, at logs, if you stack them correctly, you don't really need them in a log holder per se. You know, I say this word per se and I actually don't know what it means, but yeah. Next is, it appears you have to look after the woman from the first trailer, you know, the one that... um. Yeah, I guess we were hot and bothered. Anyway, I'm very curious to see how this pans out. I am liking it. She's out the front freezing cold, so I'm guessing the player has to take care of her. Now, if you've ever dug through the code of the forest, you'll find some stuff in there about Timmy requiring food and that, and he's got stats. I think they possibly had some ending involving you looking after Timmy, but they might have scrapped it. You think about the forests and the way they did it, I can't see it fitting in too well. I'm not sure. It just sounded like extra work, but this seems to be like a feature they're putting in from the start of the game. You got to look after this woman. So what I think they might have done is taken some of that coding that they done for Timmy and they've applied it to the this. There are parts of this that worry me that it might become a bit tedious at times, but I trust they're not. I really do. I think they'll be able to go really well with this. And plus this thing just, I love this creature or whatever she is. I really do. And I just want to show appreciation to End Night for putting clothing on her because I like that personally. You got to leave something to the imagination. And two is that I don't have to worry about getting demonetized every time I look at my missus. But moving on, I do like how the players just left her out here in the cold though instead of whacking her inside. <laughs> you got to show them who's the boss, right? Anyway, 
in the next scene, the player's walking towards my missus and he's holding what I thought was originally a bear trap because I just skimmed over it, but it's actually a crossbow that's unloaded. Digit, who helps me with the thumbnails and he's quite knowledgeable about the stuff as he was in the army. I was only in the police, so my knowledge about some of this stuff is just far too limited. But he said, this is a crossbow and he found the model of it and I didn't grab the model name and I can't look it up right now because I'm in a massive rush. Oh, it's just turned Christmas Day here. So Merry Christmas to everyone who's listening to this right now. Anyway, it will look much more like a crossbow when it's loaded. The thing is when they're loaded, it's probably not a good idea to walk around with a loaded crossbow all the time because I imagine it will place a lot of tension on the strings and that sort of stuff. So you load it for when you might need it. That might be a thing. And it is definitely not something you could craft. You could not craft this. Though they might go down a route of you've got to build it. You've got to find the path for it because looking at it there's a lot of screws and stuff in that there so that could be a thing i don't know enough about it but it's a compound crossbow next thing about the scene is that my missus is there and she seems to be relaxing in a bit of a seductive pose which is just i just i just love it the next thing is that there's salmon jumping up river one of the solid indicators that this is definitely canada or northern america though i've never been to the northern hemisphere so i don't know which way the fish jump up or down that got me thinking is that they might add bears to the game. A lot of people have been requesting that because I do read the comments. I think animals are very hard to animate and a bear would be very difficult to animate too. I could just imagine going through this game and then you see baby brown bear cubs. You would just literally shit your pants. <laughs> I know I would because <laughs> that's pretty much how it goes on in real life, isn't it? They will see. I think they could fit it into the game well. But yeah, the salmon's jumping up the river, which looks really good. And also the water particles coming off the river look really good too. The waterfall, I should say. What's cool is that in that Q&A I did, they mentioned that they could do seasons. So it'll be very interesting to see how the world would look and the snow and that sort of stuff. Would these rivers freeze over or not? There's only one other survival game that I know that has seasons and that's subsistence. And that's only a one man developer team. Well, it's not really a team if it's one person. God, fuck it. It's like 12 a.m. So... <laughs> bear with me while I'm recording this. So it'll be very interesting to see what these guys can pull off of their seasons. Obviously, it's going to be a lot better than Subsistence, but I haven't played that game since they added that update. And that game is also in Unreal Engine. This is in Unity. The next scene is the player holding a pistol. Originally, at first, I thought it was like a modified Glock 22, but because that's all I've been trained with when I was a cop, and that's the only gun I ever used while I was there. It's probably the first thing we're going to say, yeah, it's Glock 22. Or oh, what's this? Yeah, it's a Glock 22. But it's not. I spoke to Digit and he believed it's a Sig Sire. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. Don't butcher me if I'm not. A Sig Sire P320 or P320. The branding on it says combat pistol, but it appears to be modeled after the SIG. You mentioned that the takedown lever is also undone on the model. It should be horizontal unless stripping the weapon. A digit believes that the designer may have confused it with a slide release catch above the player's thumb knuckle. That's probably why I got it confused and thinking it was a Glock. But the grip on the... Oh man, I'm going to regret saying this because I'll get butchered, but... Oh God, I can't even remember the name of the parts anymore. It's been so long since I stripped and cleaned a pistol. I'm just going to leave it there. I'm not going to say anymore because I'll get butchered in the comments by the Americans. <laughs> But I don't blame you. It's just guns are not very common in Australia. The iron sights actually have green dots on them, which I don't think you'd be able to power the LEDs on a pistol. I mean, it could be radium or uranium. I'm not sure what it is. I don't know if you can use that material for such things anymore, but they do glow. Could make it easy to see through iron sights at night, but I'm not sure about that. I was actually a very good shot with a pistol, mind you, for those who are being very critical of me right now. Another part of this scene is the blue light face mask on one of the cannibals. It's glowing blue, but it doesn't look like he's wearing goggles or anything. I'm not sure what he's wearing. It might be a status thing. He might be a leader or something. I do like the headshot that he gets. That's quite cool. And she's pointing at him and then she gets all shocked when he gets shot in the head. So she's definitely not going to survive on her own without you. <laughs> I'll say that. They've also definitely worked on a lot of the movement. Like they crawl back away from you. They still help each other. I still think they did a really good job in the forest, so I can't really say if this is any better, but it does look really good. They're probably able to do more with it. The cannibals also look very tough. He shoots them in the stomach and kind of gets wounded. Doesn't instantly kill him. There's a lot of guns in this trailer, and I'm so glad that I asked in the Q&A about gunplay being overdone in this game. If I'd never asked that question, I'd be extremely worried that this was just going to turn into a bit of a shooter. But since they said the ammo would be very limited and the player would have to choose when to use it appropriately, I think that's good. Also note that none of the textures on these cannibals are rehashes from the forest. They're all new. 
I don't recognize any of these. And I cropped every cannibal just about. So I zoomed in and checked out all their prints and what they were wearing and that sort of stuff. Their paintings, markings, these are all different. In the next scene, you can see that the player is digging holes in the ground with a shovel. I'm guessing it's the same shovel that you can see in the helicopter. Now, at first I got really excited because the ground in the forest can't be tampered with. You can't alter it. Though, thinking about it more has got me worried as to why he's digging these holes and what it could mean. For example, if you needed to do this to build a house, could you imagine how long that might take? Do you think it would be very exciting? <laughs> I don't think it would be. Though I think they're doing it for the right reasons. So it's probably for gardens or maybe you need to do it to plant posts to make your building stronger. That kind of thing would be really cool. But as long as it doesn't turn into like a half an hour digging spree just to build a house, you know what I mean? I don't know if you're going to be able to level the ground very well so you can fit more things in. If you can, that's perfect. I don't mind digging for half an hour, but that means you'd be able to build in all sorts of places. You don't have to worry about the terrain so much. So there are some concerns with this, just mainly about it turning into a grind. So, you know, you had log farming in the forest. In this game, you'll have log farming and dirt farming, which is probably not a good thing. But too early to say, it's good to see that they're showing this mechanic that the ground can be altered. In this scene, the player is wiping away a door and trying to open it. It looks like it's to a compound or an underground bunker. The symbol on the door can barely be made out. I ran it by previous symbols from the forest and sorry if you haven't played that game and this is a spoiler, but this isn't the Sahara symbol from what I can tell. The Sahara symbol is actually a little mountain, though these symbols do seem familiar, but I don't know if I've seen them in the forest itself. Here they're like a honeycomb pattern, but it's just probably too limited to tell. But it would be good to see Sahara return. I'd like to know more about what they did in this series because I've only just touched on them in the forest. Hopefully they do make a return. Touching more on the hand models, this hand model looks great. You can see the veins in the hand in that. It looks really good. Index finger is a little bit indent, but that looks fine. I'll probably fix that later on. The thumb also looks very far away from the hand too. God, I'm nitpicking, but it looks like he gets into this bunker thing here. And it's definitely got a bunker vibe due to the, how the walls are. They're like concrete walls. But this is like a full-on lounge room. There's a lounge suite, coffee table, there's a chessboard there. Looks like there's a kitchen in the background. And then the player enters a room and there's a 3D printer there. Now, there's a few things to note here. Either N Knight or the person who designed the mask owns a 3D printer. The reason I can tell is that I've recently started getting into the 3D printing and the lines along the mask happen on your 3D prints. <laughs> so that attention to detail, perfect. That's great. <laughs> I did a good job on that one. As for the 3D printer, it's definitely not one I recognize, but I'm not that far into it. And it looks like it's got an auto adjusting bed, so you don't have to sit there for 45 minutes like I do trying to get the bed level. There's quite a few things in the scene I want to address. The toy looks like the robot toy from the forest, but it's a little bit different. I'll put a, a picture. You can tell the similarities mainly with the arms and legs, but the head and it looks a lot wider. It looks a bit different there. Now, two of the icons are from the forest, which I actually don't have any problem with them using or reusing assets from the forest, especially if it's just an icon. I actually don't care what they use. I wouldn't mind seeing the arms in the Virginia in this one. Same with the cow man, but that's just me. I just think they were very good monsters and I didn't hate them. Not bringing back the worm, so I suppose that's all good. But yeah, if N Knight does watch this, go for it if you want. Yeah, the icons being reused are Timmy's toy and those little dots down the bottom, they're actually the old gun ammo. The little blood symbol down the bottom of the 3D printer, it looks like the thirst symbol from the forest, but it's such a simple design that it could be different. I don't know. It does look like you can 3D print things. And if you've ever seen what a 3D printer can do, they can do a lot. Imagine this ending up on the Steam Workshop. <laughs> a lot of people 3D printing useless crap for their house and stuff. <laughs> uh, that would be funny. But anyway, that would be such a cool feature to add to your game. That would be insane. But whether it would cause too many issues with bugs and that, I'm not sure. That's just brilliant. I think that's so cool. But it looks like you can print masks. You might be able to print other things. Imagine you could probably print parts to repair, maybe the crossbow or too early to tell. In the next scene, you can see the player splitting logs. So what it actually looks like is that this is a floor, and as he's going to place the log, he has to split it first, and then it places down, which is really cool. That's really immersive. Though it looks pretty tough to be able to split a log in one hit. <laughs> I can see they're really whacking on the immersion in this. They're really adding to the realism of it, which is just fantastic, especially for this type of game. Now in this scene, he hits the window section and knocks it out with the axe. I think that's really cool. 
definitely an immersive thing. You can actually feel the impact of him knocking that piece of log out. Whether it could be reused or not, probably not. But I don't know what you're going to do with that. Make two weapon holders? I don't know. But it looks like you can make modifications after you've built it, which is pretty cool. Because before, if you put in a wall and you wanted to add a window, you had to demolish that wall. You'd lose all the logs. Then you'd have to re-add it with the window section in. So it looks like the procedural building system is coming back, which I really hope it does or I did does whatever because it was one of the best parts of the game for me the building system was so unique and it wasn't boring you could do so many different things it wasn't like building ikea furniture which is what most survival games are like and it's just oh god after playing stranded deep and subnautica those games building systems were the most boring things i've ever seen it's like folding up a box there's barely any creativity to it i really do hope this is the procedural building system it does look like it but i haven't seen any custom foundations yet so it's hard to say Next is the player walking into what appears to be his base. The first thing you notice is that he's got a different axe. This looks like it's going to be the modern axe, but that axe head, holy crap. It's not as tall, but it's definitely wider. That thing's going to hit like a truck, I bet. Next thing you'll notice is that on the left, there's a zip line, and it looks like pretty much identical to the forest zip line. The textures for the logs look different, which is fine. They look a lot darker the logs in the forest are a lot brighter actually come to think of it a lot of the logs in this they haven't had the bark stripped off them which is probably the reason which i don't know why you'd strip off the bark if it wasn't necessary the rope's also a lot darker on the zip line too which might be a good thing it does look better but the thing is if rope's that dark it's going to be very difficult to see if it's ever in the environment unless they've got a new way of making it you know stripping down certain plants and making fiber and that sort of stuff who knows just hopefully it's not a pain to find because you know, making it difficult to see next in this scene is that there's a cannibal trying to barge down the door i'm looking at his hands and it appears he's got a tennis racket I think it's a tennis racket. Looks like the animations probably still need a bit of work. I'm not sure. It's hard to say. There's no impact of him hitting the door like it doesn't shutter and that sort of stuff, but that's minor. I wouldn't care about that. I just thought there's something I noticed. If the cannibals are at this point barging on your front door, then you probably are screwed. <laughs> I do hope that tennis racket makes a return. That was a very good weapon. It looks like the player's just using the standard log walls as walls here, like out of defense and that sort of stuff. Unless that's what defensive walls are going to be. They're just going to be logs laying on their sides. I'm not sure. Oh, there's a cannibal there also trying to knock it down. Also, some of these walls are actually six high instead of the five high that they had before. I think if going with a six high wall would probably be better, unless you can adjust it like that building mod that Danny Parker made where you can adjust how much height it's got. Oh, this one's holding a bone. And the next thing you can see a cannibal standing on top of your wall. So that's going to be a thing they might be able to just jump straight up. He's also peeking at you from behind his knee. <laughs> Also, you can tell by the log falling in the scene that the game has gravity, which is also good to know. But in all seriousness, it looks like they're breaking apart the player's base. And this next thing, you can see a cannibal dragging away a log. So it looks like they can either steal your building materials and maybe use them for themselves, or maybe he's returning it to nature, I'm not sure. Also in this scene, you can see a white bird flying, and it looks like a seagull. From what I can tell, it doesn't look like it's a new model from the forest. It looks like the same one, which also I don't care. They redid a lot of models. Some of them look really good. The geese is not one that looks good. That's probably one of the worst. But a lot of them, like the shark head, the lizard and all that, they got redone. I'm not sure if lizards will return in this one because the one that they actually had in the forest was a goanna, which is native to Australia. It probably doesn't really fit, but we'll see. They might have some alternative. I don't really care. I didn't really go, oh my God, there's a goanna in Canada. Is my immersion's broken? Help. In this next scene, you can see a larger cannibal throw a smaller cannibal. Now this larger one's wearing a gold mask. So it looks like there's going to be tribes in this which might be part of their new AI system they're doing, which I think would be really cool. Different tribes not getting along. You know, you can get on the good side of some, bad side of others, etc. Though this scene did remind me of the meme, the choke me daddy meme. It really did. <laughs> Also gave me the Darth Vader vibes because the guy looks like a freaking unit. One thing I noticed about this scene too is that they're dealing with their tribal squabbles while in your base. It's like, this is no community hall. What are you doing? <laughs> sort your crap out elsewhere. <laughs> uh, oh well. But the player's holding a shotgun here. It's a modified shotgun. Or the Remington something. I can't remember it. Had it in a previous video where what I found on the game long ago. So in this scene, the player's wearing the red mask and he's looking at the one with the gold mask and they're kind of having a standoff almost. Maybe the cannibals have their own 3D printer. <laughs> 
God, I'm saying a lot of stupid crap. I do think that concerns me with this scene is that the player's wearing this red mask and it's obscuring his view quite a lot. Probably more so than might be necessary, but maybe it's something that you just put on your face to signal who you are. You don't wear it around all the time. Looks like red paint is out the window. It's not a thing anymore. Because that scene back earlier where the player's using a pistol, they're covered in red paint. So there's definitely some sort of trouble system going on. He also looks like he's wearing human skin as well, unless it's deer skin, hard to say. And then next thing you see one of the new mutants and it looks like a human from the waist down, except it's upper body, has to visit the dentist a lot due to the amount of teeth it's got. I think they're teeth anyway. Now this thing doesn't look like it's going to be that dangerous unless it can run and charge at you. However, if it got close to you, I think you're going to be royally screwed. <laughs> I don't want to get near that thing. You can even see the player backing away from it. <laughs> Though in the next scene, the player's using a taser on one of them. Now, I promised myself I wouldn't go over this too much because I'm actually trained to use this type of taser. I think this is an X26 model. I went back through my training records of when I was in the police and yeah, this is a model that I was trained to use. I've actually been tased by one of these, the part of the training thing. And yeah, using this as a weapon in a game like this, they probably can't go down the realistic route. Now, the thing is, these things have a really bad range. And when you press the button, they stun for five seconds. Though you can keep tasering them for a long time. I think it's probably got about a full battery charge of five minutes, but it won't kill anything. Unless they've got a heart condition, they're not realistically going to kill something. Another thing too is that they fire two prongs and they go out at angles. So that's what reduces their range, but they need to create the electrical current. Two prongs need to hit. If one hits and the other one doesn't, then it just hurts them. And not even much. If you get them in the eye or something like that, yeah, that can hurt them a lot, which does happen in real life. From memory, the tasers are very low on amperage. Amps are the ones that actually can kill you, but wattage is not so much unless it's like through the roof. Now, the thing is when you fire these two prongs, it depends where they hit them. Now, if both prongs hit them in the upper body, their upper body will seize up. They can't control it, but their legs will be fine. So they'll be able to run away and stuff like that. If both prongs hit them in the legs, then they lose control of their legs. They'll collapse to the ground, but their upper body is still mobile. If one hits the upper body and the lower body, it creates what's called breaking the belt. That's the terminology that they used in the police. And that's what you want to do because it disables their upper body and lower body. This is real from memory unless it's changed, which I don't think it would because it's electricity. It's been around forever. That type of system would be too complicated to add. Now the cartridges for them too, they wouldn't take that long to reload, but I'm just trying to figure out the viability of using such a weapon in such a game. What I think it might be used for is their AI system. If they got tribes and stuff like that, whether, you know, if you're having an issue with a tribe, instead of killing them, you stun them. That might might be a thing. In real life, if you get the prongs in them, you can sit there hitting the button non-stop pretty much for a very long time, which obviously would get you probably fired if you were a police officer doing that. I'm not sure why he's firing it on its side because when you use it, there's two red dots that happen. Like I said, there's two prongs that will show you roughly where they're going to go. The range on them is absolutely god awful. I don't think anything after five meters you're going to hit anything. But you can actually see the confetti parts come out of the taser cartridge, which they use to identify the number and stuff towards the taser to make sure they haven't been used in police brutality and that sort of stuff. It's hard to say what they're going to use this for. I said to myself I wouldn't go on too long about this, but it is something I know. But I kind of hope they don't go down the realistic route. I hope it actually just kills them because <laughs> then it will be more cool. <laughs> But there's not much else to sell on this monster. It looks like fingers or teeth, I'd say. In this scene here, you can see a mutant on the left. It looks like it's got two legs, one big butthole, and two torsos and forearms. And they don't look like they've got a face on them. I'm guessing that these things could run very fast. You won't be able to outrun these. So I'm guessing they'll be the ones that chase you down on that. Probably the one in the screenshot of the trailer that they have. Though they've definitely done a good job designing these. These do look pretty scary. They've got the horror theme definitely going. Another thing to notice about this scene is that there's a big lake, but there's no island in the middle of it. So I'm curious what's in there. It might be a waterfall down the back. It's hard to say. I assume so, because where else is the water going to go from this waterfall? And then after that scene, that's it. A lot more was covered in this trailer than the last one. This one is just amazing. I liked everything about it. I really did. This game is going to be one of the best games I've ever played. I can tell. I'm hoping it is. And they say that it's coming out in 2021, which is awesome news. And I'd like to thank N Knight for releasing this trailer. This was a nice Christmas present because when you get to this age, you don't get as many Christmas presents as you used to. So this was very nice. Thank you, Ennut. Anyway, if you love this video, make sure you like and subscribe. Cheers.